You see, when I, when I first heard music on the, uh, uh, on the radio and on record, uh -huh. um, uh, I thought the rhythm guitar player played the bass part. Oh, yeah. And so, by accident, I discovered how to play the rhythm and the bass at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, uh, our, we, we, we didn't know about the bass guitar being on yeah. the record. So we were playing a, a concert, uh, and we were part of, m uh, many artists were on, and we, we played our bit. And uh, then this band came out, mm -hmm. and they had uh, Fender Stratocaster, yeah. Fender Jaguar, Fender Precision bass. And I said, what is this guitar? It only has four strings. Four, yeah. <laughs> and, they, and this man said, oh, it's the bass. And I said, what's the bass? I, I didn't know. And, uh, and then I realized, oh, that's right. So, but uh, by that time, I, already, I, I could already do it. Uh -huh. So, you know, all my life has been like this, a big accident. Always something good happens from accident. And what didn't happen by accident in your life? Um, what didn't happen from accident? <laughs> Um, I guess uh, the amount of work that I, I put into my music and to my playing, I, I work very hard at it. It's no accident. It, you know, it, it's, yeah. no, it's no luck. The, the harder I work, the luckier I get. When you, when you buy a new guitar, yeah. uh, how can you tell it's the best one? The best guitar in the world is the one that you love to play and that you don't want to put down. That's the best guitar. It doesn't matter where it was made, how much it cost, what it looks like, who, it doesn't matter. If you love it and you love to play it, that's all that matters. My philosophy uh -huh. is playing the guitar is already so difficult. Why make it more difficult than <laughs> when you are struggling? You know? So all my guitars have the action as low as I can get them. Yeah. All of them buzz, but you don't hear it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I read that the mouse had been stolen to you some years ago. The, the first right? mouse. The, the first, first one? Yeah, that's why this one was made. I was playing a concert at the Panama Theatre in Amsterdam, and it was a wild Dutch crowd. And they say, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. You know? <laughs> and so I played the concert, and I took the guitar off, and I put it in the bag, and I put it at the side of the stage. Mm -hmm. And then I went to go to where the CDs uh, were to sign autographs for, for, for people. And I got down in the crowd, and the crowd just rushed to me. And they pushed me against the wall. And, and I had to sign right there. I couldn't go anywhere. And I looked on the stage, and there were people on the stage. And I thought, that they shouldn't be on the stage. They're, they're not the crew. Well, I finally finished signing autographs, and I went back to pack up the rest of my equipment. And I said, has anybody seen my, my guitar? Where is my, my guitar? And people said, we don't know. It was gone. I went to the police. And the policeman said to me, you may as well say goodbye, because this guitar is gone. You'll never see it again. And I said, OK. So I got up early the next morning. And I thought to myself, OK, I have two more guitars with me because the next day I had to fly to New Zealand to start a tour. I said, I have two guitars with me. I will have to be happy with that. So I saw the glass as empty. Yeah. And uh, it was a miracle what happened. There was a young Irish girl who worked in an Irish pub in Amsterdam. And she had a party at her uh, apartment. Uh, after my concert. And many people come, and somebody came with my guitar. And then um, there was singing and dancing and playing, and, uh, and some people slept on the floor and on the, on the couch. She came down in the morning to get ready to go to work, and she saw this uh, gu guitar case, and she thought, it doesn't look like it belongs to anybody. So she went and unzipped the top, mm -hmm. and in the top was a business card from my agent in England. And so she called, and she said, 
oh my God, Tommy's guitar is in my house. Somebody <laughs> has brought it here. What, what will I do? And he said, take it to your work to, and we will find a way to find Tommy. So he, he contacted my manager, Gina, who just landed into Sydney ready for my Australian tour. She landed into Sydney and she, he, he found her and said, Tommy's guitar has been stolen. It's at this Irish pub in the red light area <laughs> in Amsterdam. <laughs> you can't trust this guitar, it goes to a red light. Uh, but um, then uh, she contacted my, my friend who has a music store who said, I think I know where he is. He's at a restaurant with many people. So he rang the restaurant and I was at that restaurant. And he said, we found your guitar, it's at this pub. Now here is the address. I couldn't believe it. So it went, it went Amsterdam, England, Sydney, back to Amsterdam. <laughs> and they found me at the restaurant. So we, we got in the car, we drove like crazy. We, we got in there, we finally found the, the pub. And I walked in and there was the girl and there was my, my guitar. And I unzipped it and it had not even been touched. Somebody just stole it and they did nothing about it and I got it back. That's unbelievable. It was a miracle. Yeah. yeah. It looks like God keeps his eye on you. He does, very much. <laughs> uh, how many guitars do you have at the moment? Um, <laughs> let me just say, David, yeah. you can never have too many guitars. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, um, I have guitars in America. I have guitars in Australia. I have some here in Europe as well. I don't know how many I have. I think maybe 150. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. And do all of them have their names? No. 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 Just the mouse. Just the mouse. Mouse one, mouse, mouse two. Mouse two, yeah. yeah. Do you think that electric guitar has a soul too? Definitely. It has a particular, it, it's more than a soul, it's a voice. That's what it is. A certain guitar has a certain voice. But it's not really the, the guitar. The guitar is just a piece of wood. It comes to life when someone plays it. Uh -huh. You know, there was a story of a um, great guitar player, uh, Barney Kessel. Uh -huh. And when he p finished playing, a lady came up and she said, oh, Mr. Kessel, your guitar sounds so beautiful like that. And he put it on the stand and he says, how does it sound now? <laughs> it doesn't sound very much now. <laughs> because he's playing it. Yeah. So. But um, my, I don't always uh, look for the, the best or the most expensive or the most decorated guitar. No, when I, when I pick up a guitar, sometimes the real cheap one that, that has been played to death, sometimes it has something about it that you just love. Mm. You know? I have several cheap old guitars that are so funky and they're so good to play, you know. And, and they make you play in a different way. They make you play a lot more daring and different, you know. When I pick up a, a, a really good, like a Gibson or a Martin, mm. I end up playing some simple things yeah. just to listen to the tone. But my best playing is usually always on some old piece of rubbish, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's true. 